back to my channel today. I want to go ahead and show you how to make these real quick, these really cool little feather charms. And these, you can make them much smaller than this for earrings. You can make them for, to tie into your hair, um, for junk journal, tassels, just all kinds of things, whatever you can think of. So I got all these little feathers at Hobby Lobby. I've got some green here, some turquoise, and some brown. And then I got these bigger ones. <clears throat> I got all these on eBay. So I'm going to show you real quick how to deal with things like this long quill on this feather. I'm not sure that's what it's called. I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. So, first things first, these are ribbon clasps, cord clasps, and you can get these at pretty much any major box craft store, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. I get all mine at Hobby Lobby, and of course I wait for them to go half off. And I run into trouble sometimes with these because these are small. These are a little bit larger, but if I could find some even larger than these, I, that would be so useful to me for a lot of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and get started. These small ones are ideal for these little feathers, but if you want to do bigger feathers, like this, then the larger ones are much better to pull these off, okay? So what I'm going to do first is I want to come in with a pair of pliers and flatten this. Flatten down that whole quill and I want to start beyond the, the feather itself where the hair is. You want to do a good at least half inch, okay? And the reason for that is because you want this part to lay inside of this little thing flat. Sometimes they can get a little twisted around and this is your best defense to avoid that. Now you want to take a real cheapo pair of scissors because this will really put burrs in them and whack off most of that quill, okay? And then I'm going to come in and I'm even going to whack off the sides of this quill. I want that all to fit nicely and flat inside of that. And I want to layer up some feathers at the same time. So I've got this beautiful brown. I'm going to add a little bit more brown to it. I just love turquoise and brown. I think that makes a really beautiful combo. So I'm going to do three, and as you can see, I did, you know, small, large, medium, small, so that you can see all three of them. Don't really need to say that, do I? And then since I'm using this big feather, I'm kind of limited. I can only find these bigger ones in gold and silver. I can't find them in any other colors yet, and I've tried. I haven't tried real hard though. Now this is mod, my Mod Podge mat and I like to just toss a drop and it's a little clogged. I'll go ahead and just throw a pin in there. I like to toss just a tiny drop in my clamp. And then while you've got these all together it's really important that you get them all flattened together before you put the clamp on. Then you just simply want to pop them in there. You want to take your flat nose pliers and just focus on the one side. And clamp it down kind of gently at first and make sure that your feathers aren't shifting around in there. And then you can come in and really cinch down on that. Your glue is going to ooze out. There's probably, you could probably use E6000 if you want. But I think the Mod Podge mat does 
a wonderful job and I have to be really careful about using toxic products. I like to use the safer the better. So now you've got this beautiful quick little charm. Isn't that pretty? And so easy. Now I've got a video on how to make these boho beads and I've got a video on how to make other charms and other beads so I'm not going to cover that in this video but what I am going to do is show you you can really dress these up you can just put a jump ring which I'll here I'll go ahead and do that now and since I'm doing gold I think I'll just go ahead and keep the gold theme going and this is a little recap let me bring you in here when you're doing a jump ring, you always want to determine your slit first, of course, and then you want to go sideways. You never want to pull it apart because then getting it back together, it distorts the ring and it makes it really tough to get it back together. You want to grab that and then grab your other pliers and just simply go to the side just like that okay and then go ahead and take your feather charm and put it on there and I'm going to leave this open should have been more prepared <laughs> so then you just take your earring I try to avoid opening the earring uh, loop if I can but if you need to open this earring loop you do it exactly the same way. So now you want to make sure that your earring is going to go on correctly. And then you just put it back together like that. And then you have this beautiful earring. This feather is quite big, but you know, it's still, some women would like to wear them really long. So let's go ahead and do a couple more real quick. These are some little tiny white feathers that I, I got these at Tandy Leather a very long time ago. Um, I've had these tucked away for years. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flatten that feather down. I really want it to lay straight. Right there. Okay, those are pretty close, but not close. They're not perfect. So I'm going to even take a little more off this. So it's okay if you take the whole quill because this quill goes all the way down. You could even cut it down to here if you wanted to make shorter. But then you've got to start trimming the hair. And it just becomes a little messier. But it's easy to pull off, okay? I have these really pretty little turquoise feathers that I wanted to use. That looks pretty nice. You could even go three. You could go a little bit bigger of one, but I set these aside, so I'm just going to do it with what I set aside. I have these really pale, pale gold clamps. I'm going to go ahead and use those. <clears throat> Again, little drop that's a giant drop but it's all right that's what I love about Mod Podge matte it dries clear and it dries matte so it's perfectly fine for it to be a little messy and again just lay it in there and focus on the one side and this is the most important side to make sure everything stays straight before you clamp it down all the way can be a little tricky but again I don't you know I try to get everything perfectly straight but if it goes wonky I don't necessarily mind that there it goes as I say it darn it I do mind get back <laughs> I try not to mind it when you're making a pair of earrings it's probably a little bit more important to get it straight see it did get a little wonky on me 
but you can tweak it a bit. So there's that one. Got a little drop of glue there. Gearing up for the bark fest, it sounds like. Hopefully I can get through this before that happens. And you can really come up with a lot of earrings and a lot of pendants very quickly like this or jewelry elements, whatever you want to use them for. Bookmark tassels. Paper clip tassels for a junk journal. That's what I love about art. You learn the basics and you let your imagination take over once you get technique down. Okay. Okay, that went smoothly. <laughs> Dare I speak too soon? It's nice to have a pair of flat nose pliers for this job here, but with teeth. Now you will, if you've got teeth, the, I like the teeth because you get a handle on things much easier, but the teeth will mar your metal, which I never mind. I think that's okay. Um, it makes it, you know, a much more handmade looking thing. You know what I mean? So there's those. And then to do, you want that straight on. I really wouldn't, I don't know, gold's fine. Let's do gold. That's what I have out. Okay. And then it's important that you put this on correctly. You can very easily put it on backwards like I just did. <laughs> Just pop that on, and then of course you always want to go from side to side, no matter what kind of ring you're working with. There, and now you've got a really simple, really beautiful solution that way, okay? Let's say you don't want earrings and you want to spruce some, some of these up. So I've got this and I've got my jump ring on here and let's say I really want to have this be a really fancy element to my junk journal. Well it doesn't matter which way this bead is going, you see. So, let me back up. So now it's irrelevant and you don't have to worry about your jump rings. You only have to worry about that when you need it straight a certain way. So, I could have left this open had I been more well thought out about what I wanted to do. But you can open it again, and every time you work with your jump rings and your metal, as long as you handle them properly, it strengthens the metal. It's called metal hardening. And then back we go. Especially pounding on metal, so if you want to use any pounded metal elements, Sometimes you got to go a little past where you went so that it lines up right, okay? But if you wanted to flatten some metal and use those elements, anytime you hammer metal, it really hardens it. Now you've got this gorgeous, beautiful journal element or a pendant. This would make a really pretty pendant whatever you want. So I'm really glad you joined me for this video today and please subscribe down below and hit the bell notifications so that you don't miss any more videos coming up. Thank you and have a great day.